Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at some of the consequences of the pandemic for both the level, the growth and the pattern of global trade in goods and services. Now, there's no question uh, that global trade in goods and services experienced a significant a deep slump in 2020 and into 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This chart shows percentage change in world trade in goods and commercial services such as travel and tourism. And you can see, first of all, the, the sharp effect of the global financial crisis and the world recession on international trade. Indeed, going forward over that period, uh, trade grew pretty slowly, particularly from, 19, from 2011 through to 2016. Uh, it was picking up quite nicely into 2018 before slowing it down again in 2019. And then, of course, we see the effect of the pandemic, uh, the shock to trade. So actually, the recovery in trade in the second half of 2021 has been faster than in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. But but uh, we'll come back, come back to that uh, in a second or two. The key point is that the pandemic has brought about, has exerted a significant shock to global trade. For many countries, including the UK, the value of the goods and services we export to other countries has fallen by more than 10%. And that's led to negative effects on economic growth, on GDP and on jobs, particularly those sectors that are heavily export dependent. And that fall in exports, you can build your analysis up, has contributed to negative multiplier effects. That said, uh, other countries have fared better, especially perhaps a cluster of countries in Southeast Asia uh, who manage the public health crisis uh, better and have started to recover more quickly. I think a good example of that would be something like a country like uh, uh, Vietnam or perhaps Malaysia. Anyway, the, the numbers are quite stark. Um, the world the amount of world trade, total trade in goods and services was twenty two trillion dollars US dollars in twenty twenty. Now that was twelve percent down compared with twenty nineteen. This figure, A, the decline is stark, isn't it? But this figure gives you a feel for the sheer size of the value of global trade in goods and services. Trading goods was down by eight percent, trading commercial services was down by twenty one percent in twenty twenty. So there has been a significant fall in the value of global trade. However, also important to recognise that there have been tremendous changes in the pattern of trade. So, if, for example, we take a look at medical products. Here's a good example. Uh, protective face masks being manufactured. For those countries with a competitive, if you like, a scaled advantage in producing and then exporting medical products, well, the pandemic, as you might expect, has seen a surge in the value of their exports in 2020. Indeed, trade in medical products increased significantly in 2020 and again in 2021. This chart, I think, provides the, the overview. It's the growth rate in 2019 in blue and the growth rate in 2020 in orange. Percentage change. And you can see that the growth of, um, of, sort of medical goods was across all products was 16%, um, including a 47% rise, 47% global rise in products, personal protective equipment, including things like face masks and shields and other things. Now, in the if you take if you take the whole value of medical goods traded in the world economy, uh, it's now six percent of total trade, compared to just over five percent two years ago. So there's been quite a significant shift in the composition of global trade, of which face masks account for about 12% of, of, uh, of medical uh, exports. And I think they provide uh, an interesting example of applied comparative advantage. So China, perhaps this is unsurprising to you, China is the world's leading exporter of face masks. They provide over half, 56% of mask manufacturing and exports in the world economy. However, uh, trade requires imports. Exports require imports. And in fact, China relies heavily on imports of, uh, of non-woven fabric, etc. from countries such as Japan and the United States. 
So China was in fact the highest, one of the biggest importer of face masks in the first half of 2020 as well. But China is a major exporter, but it imports non-woven fabric from Japan and the United States. A good example of the interrelationships between countries. Here in the UK, of course, shortages of face masks was an initially big problem in the early stages of the pandemic. Just over uh, 65%, just under two thirds of our face masks were sourced from China during 2020. Another aspect of uh, of trade, I think, linked to the pandemic, which is quite interesting, is the out of derived demand. So the vaccination programme, of course, which has been uh, ramped up in the last year or so, is a great example of derived demand, because as spending on the vaccine programme increased, so too did uh, international demand for and sales of things like rubber gloves, syringes and needles, if you like, the component parts the medical supplies needed for administering the vaccines. And so that's boosted the value of global trade in those products as well. The country that's benefited from this is Malaysia. The supply of rubber gloves, if you didn't know this before, is actually highly geographically concentrated in the world economy. And four of the top five rubber glove manufacturers in the world are in Asia. I think they account for something like 85, 86% of the total export market for gloves. And Malaysia has over half of that. So here's a terrific example of a country which has built up a scaled competitive advantage in producing rubber gloves, which of course have become hugely important as part of the uh, as part of the, the COVID pandemic response. So whilst those countries, producers of face masks, needles, syringes, rubber gloves and others, including medical therapeutics. Whilst those countries have seen an increase in the value of their trade, of course, there's been a downside effect, not not least in travel and tourism. Uh, These sectors, tourism, travel related services plunged in 2020 as travel restrictions, of course, were imposed and have in many ways been maintained during the pandemic. And this chart makes this really clear. The value of global exports in travel you take a foreign flight, for example, um, well, more than halved in 2020 compared to 2019. That is a staggering fall. And uh, here's a, an interesting chart which just shows the severity of the slump. Uh, international commercial flights fell very sharply. Um, now, by, by the late part of 2020, the number of flights returned to just over half their level for the pandemic. But actually, a lot of it is freight rather than passenger transport in particular, uh, because passenger numbers are restricted by the need to be vaccinated and things. In the UK, uh, the latest data shows that the pandemic triggered a 71% fall in international flights in and out of the UK. Uh, That's about 400,000 international flights in a year compared with over 1.4 million before travel was restricted. So this sector has clearly been really badly hit. And from the point of view of your economics, your exams, I think it's a good example to bear in mind that countries with a very high percentage share of exports that derive directly from tourism and travel, well, they have really suffered very badly during the pandemic. And it's a great contextual example to have in your notes of over-dependence on tourism as a source of growth and development. The poorest countries in the world have also seen their trade suffer. Their exports have fallen in value by 12% compared with 9% for the rest of the world. And you can see the effect here. I think this is an important chart, actually. Exports are crucial for the least developed countries as a pathway to drive growth. Uh, And uh, that growth can lift per capita incomes and reduce extreme poverty. Well, according to the World Bank, Because of the pandemic, and the the fall in exports is shown here, extreme poverty rose in 2020 for the first time in over two decades. And about 100 million extra people, more people, are now living on less than $1.90 a day. And in part, uh, smaller, poorer countries tend to be more fragile, uh, have limited sort of fiscal resources to be able to stimulate their economy. They're highly dependent on trade and travel. Um, they're certainly less diversified than larger larger economies, and that's become a big problem. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, one other aspect is quite interesting is, is the prices of commodities. So having been very flat for a period of time, obviously they fell, the price of fuel, for example, in yellow, fell during the pandemic, and so too the price of 
agriculture and raw materials. But in the latter part of the pandemic, into the second half of 2020, into 2021, we have seen a significant increase in the world price, from a low base in terms of fuel, but in the world price of primary commodities. And again, this is something to bear in mind. The strength of recovery of the world economy, demand growing quite strongly with fairly inelastic supply, has caused commodity prices to rise quite sharply, in particular there, the grey line showing metals. Now, for some developing emerging countries, this is good news. If they're a net commodity exporter, the increase in commodity prices will improve both their terms of trade and also, in theory, their net trade balance. But for other uh, commodity importers, this is causing higher inflation and risk causing a big rise in food and fuel poverty. In many low-income countries particularly, energy is a critical commodity for food production and heating. And higher energy prices is causing an increase in fertiliser prices, for example, which in turn increases the cost of food production and is imposing a big squeeze on, on real incomes. A quick word to finish with on UK trade. The UK economy, of course, is highly open. About two thirds of our GDP is linked to trade. And we had to put in context that um, what's happened in the UK, of course, is, has, has happened at the same time as our departure from the European Union. Uh, but there was a big fall in the value of trade. Exports fell 13.6% last year. Imports fell just actually even a bit more by 14.3%. A lot of that linked, a lot of that linked to the, the sharp decline in UK people travelling overseas. We kept our position as the eighth largest exporter of goods. And we also maintained our position as the second largest exporter of services. But given that, it's mainly the service parts of the world economy that have been badly hit by the pandemic. That's not great news for the UK. Well, my final comment is that the pandemic has affected world trade in services probably more than world trade in goods. <clears throat> Pardon me. So those countries which are service dominated and highly dependent on service exports have taken a big hit from the pandemic. And trade in travel and tourism is the obvious obvious good examples to use in a, in a question. However, for evaluation, of course, uh, trade in telecoms and IT services, you know, from Zoom to sports apps, well, they've boomed as people will start to work from home. Uh, people are buying more computer hardware and extra screens, some increased connectivity, hardware and software. And countries that produce the computer hardware one thinks of countries like perhaps Mexico and Slovenia and South Korea and things like that. Um, they have surged. That their, their exports have increased, uh, benefiting a number of, of countries with a comparative advantage in manufacturing. OK, there we go. That was a quick look at the, uh, the some of the big global trade numbers for 2020 into 2021. It's a big story. The pandemic has been a major shock to the world economy. And hopefully you've got some good contextual examples for your uh, economics revision notes. Stay safe, stay well please, it's always great to see you. We don't take your visits to this website for granted at all. We love to have you joining in our videos and uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.